Just give up, for after 12 years of heartaches and failures, disappointments and fears, accept your condition with the multitude. He will not see us. I can hear her rejoicing as she looks down the lane. She sees someone coming and they're calling his name, son of David, Messiah. She heard someone call him the healer. The crippled and lame are now leaping for joy. Those who were blind are beholding the Lord. Could this be the moment, or would hindrances any conceal her? Her heart beat so fast that she came in. Her emotions were filled with both joy and with pride. She let him pass by, but not out of reach. As she touched his garments, he turned to speak. Someone's been healed today. A miracle passed your way. Who touched my clothes? A man fell in a hole. He fell in a hole and he couldn't get out.
a traveler passed by. He told the man to meditate, to purify his mind, and when he reached Nirvana, all suffering would cease. The man did as he was told, but he remained in the hole. Another man appeared. He explained that the hole didn't exist, and neither, in fact, did the man. It was all an illusion. The man who did not exist was still stuck in the hole that was not there. Another visitor arrived. He instructed the man to perform good deeds to improve his karma, and though he would still die in the hole, he might be reincarnated as something magnificent. Another man looked down from above. He taught the man to pray five times a day facing east and to follow five important tenets. If he was faithful, one day, perhaps, the divine would set him free. The man prayed as best he could, but he was losing strength, and in the hole he remained. Another man appeared. There was something different about him. He called down to the man in the hole and asked him if he wanted to be free. This man lowered himself into the earth, into the pit. He took hold of the man and dragged him into the light. And the man in the hole, who could not get himself out, was saved. Good morning, New Hope. It is great to see everybody this morning, and we're happy to have you here at Hope on the Hill. If you are a first-time visitor or a recent attender, we want to invite you to fill out the guest card that you will find attached to the end of your bulletin. We would love to have a record of your visit. If you would like to fill that out and turn it in to the welcome table after the service, uh, we have a gift for you. Uh, if anyone would like to fill that out, uh, if you want to share with us a prayer request or you would like to have a contact or a personal visit from Brother Tony, you can fill that out, drop it off in the offering bucket on your way out, and we will take care of that accordingly. But we want to welcome you this morning and just appreciate uh, being able to come together as a church family today. A little later on, we'll be dismissing uh, the kids for Children's Church, but to uh, begin this morning, I'm going to invite Kelvin Gunnels to the platform. Uh, Kelvin uh, is, a, uh, is our mission team director. That's one of the things that he does around here. And I've asked him today to lead us in our uh, Bible reading. Uh, our New Hope family is reading through the Bible as a congregation. And you are invited to join us in doing that. That's why you will find the Bible reading schedule on the front of your bulletin. You can also find it on our website, hopeonthehill.net. And so we are doing that together this year as a uh, congregation. And so each week we're going to be uh, having a different person share with us a passage from uh, the previous week's reading, a passage of their choice. So, Brother Kelvin, if you would come and share with us. Thank you. Would you all please stand and honor the reading of God's Word? Do I have this turned on right? Okay, good. This is from our reading a couple of days ago, Psalm 33, verses 18 through 22. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His mercy to deliver their soul from death 
and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity for us to read together through your scripture and gain insight. Lord, I pray as the message applies to our reading this week, you would help us gain even deeper understanding and the application that you want in a way that glorifies you. We thank you in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. If you're happy and you know it, let's sing. What did you think I was going to say? Uh, we're going to sing a hymn this morning, start with a hymn, and man, it was good. I was really looking forward to Brother Kelvin sing, uh, reading something from Leviticus about being clean and unclean and, and all that. So, But we'll, we'll take that. It was a great song. Thank you, Brother Kelvin. Let's sing this morning. Let's start with a hymn. Through my disappointment, striving discontentment, I cast my every care on the
song this morning. You may have heard it before, but speaking of God being consistent through life, as always. I believe you gave sight to the blind. I believe that the dead came to life. I believe there were wonders and signs. You're still the same. I believe every word that you said. I believe there are scars in your hands. That your goodness is good without end. And you'll never I will tell of your wonders and sing of your grace. The God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now and always. Always. Your mercy is mighty, age after age. And all generations will bow down and pray. Yesterday, now, and always, always. 
Lord God, we thank you for being faithful. Lord, for being consistent. Lord, for loving us. Lord, through the ups and the downs. Lord, for seeing us through. Lord, all these issues and situations of life. Lord, just for being God. Lord, I do pray that, Lord, that we would humble ourselves before your mighty power, your authority. Lord, I pray that we would humble ourselves today. Lord, even this day, Lord, to your word and to what you have for us. Lord, that as we leave here, Lord, that we would leave submissive to what you have for us today. Lord, open our hearts. Lord, lead us, Lord, through your spirit to what you have for us, we pray. In your precious son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Please remain standing. We are going to dismiss Children's Church. We have a Children's Church program for the kiddos up through about third or fourth grade level. They may walk quietly in single file line. <laughs> or run like the wind. <laughs> Are y'all excited about being in grown up church? Oh, okay, good. All right, yes, not to be outdone by the children. We don't, uh, there you go. Okay, I'm glad that you're happy to be in God's house today. Amen? Amen. Hey, that was pretty good. Are you happy to be here too? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, we know that's not true. Uh, I mean, that response was not accurate. Um, but we are happy to be here today, and I invite you to join me in our Bible reading, which can be found in Exodus chapter 40. Trust that you have a Bible. Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 through 38. You can also follow along on your phone on the YouVersion app under the live event. There you can find Brother Tony's outline. The message today Partly cloudy, Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 through 38, where the Bible says, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and a fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. And let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to this place, that we can fellowship together with other believers, that we can receive the encouragement or the challenge, or the conviction, the edification, whatever it is we need today, we pray that we would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's working in our lives, both individually and collectively, that we would respond to that working and be drawn closer to you with a right spirit, a right heart, a right attitude, and that all that takes place in, in this building from the nursery to children's church to this room would glorify you and would cause us to uh, change uh, and be, um, become the salt and light that we need to be and uh, be sensitive to your leading in our lives. And in your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. So I just wanted to give a little testimony before I, I sang this song about trusting the Lord. If you guys have been aware, the last just about every time we enter this building, trust is being a question that's just being spoken. With Moses leading the people trusting God, with the people trusting Moses. And so a life of trust as a Christian is like the most amazing thing as you walk out your Christian life. And so I just want to encourage you guys today because I know specifically three, four families that in this body and probably every family have got areas of trust that they're having to trust God to deliver them from something or give them strength in an area and so as I sing this song and as I read the scripture before I sing it I just want to encourage you that 
trust is an amazing thing. And this song is a testimony of just some things that I've had to walk out in my own life of laying down things to be able to trust him completely. This is Psalm 18.2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. single dream I lay each one down at your feet every moment of my wondering never changes what you see I've tried to win this war I confess my hands are weary I need Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust. Trust in you. Truth is, you know what tomorrow, tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. Have not seen. So in all things, be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you Trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I with me all right power uh, so in your bible reading this week you've read um through the end part the last of exodus and uh through the first part first third of leviticus and i am sure that you have just enjoyed it and leprosy and being clean and unclean and the the uh, repeating of of the uh, the temple and and the um, the, uh, the the description of the temple and how it was supposed to be built and and 
um, how many loops and how many rings and how many posts and and all of that. My, my wife, we were reading, and she said, uh, "Didn't we just read this? I mean, is they repeating this? I mean, <laughs> right?" And you, you probably thought to yourself, "That wasn't a fun read the first time, right?" All of this about the. The, the, the tabernacle and the order of the tabernacle and the pieces of the tabernacle. And, and, um, and then you got into Leviticus and you thought, whew, finally, um, I'm through with that. And then, and then <laughs> you got into washings and sacrifices and clean and unclean and leprosy and, and, and all this stuff and, and some things that, that may have seemed weird to you, especially if you weren't at the, the study uh, of Leviticus that we did on Wednesday night. And, and you're like, why? Why? Right? You may have even thought to yourself, Brother Tony got me into this. Listen, this is, this is important stuff. Okay? Everything in the, in, the, in the nation of Israel. So God makes a people for himself in the very beginning. So what you read in Genesis, when you started in Genesis, what you saw was, and we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school, in First Principles, that God, that there is a God, that He has a purpose, and He created a people for Himself. That's jump. Garden of Eden stuff. Right? Fundamental design stuff. And then that man, he does what he does, and, 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 and God has to to intervene and redeem and God creates a people for himself in Israel and and so God has given them these laws and principles and and rules and and um, and laws about being clean and unclean all that revolve around approaching him and living with him in fellowship and you're like man this is getting tedious which by the way um, it can seem like that sometime right the Christian life. It seemed like, man, this is getting tedious. You're learning something as you're reading through Scripture. It's going to be important. And so you have this tabernacle. And this tabernacle, what you saw at the end of Exodus in your reading, and then what you saw in the beginning of Leviticus, all revolved around what we're going to see here, and that is, God's presence. Now listen again what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 40, verse number 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hangings of the court um, of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. So he finished the work that God had given him to do in this tabernacle. Verse number 34. Then. Then. The cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So God gives Moses the rules, the regulations, the order, the pattern of the tabernacle. And he does what God told him to do. And then the presence of God fills it. So many people want to know how life works and why life doesn't seem to be working and and all these things. God gives us in His Word this pattern of what it's like to experience what you were designed for. And when you don't do what you're designed for, there's no wonder why it doesn't work. One time my my mother-in-law, before she passed away, um, she had a riding mower, and I had a push mower. So I messed up my push mower. I won't go into that. But I borrowed my mother-in-law's riding mower. And in her, in her, um, in her shed with her riding mower, she had two gas cans. One of them had diesel. Yep. Now, look... <laughs> They're both red gas cans. I'm like, she didn't have anything that runs on diesel that I'm aware of. Right? So I just fill the thing up. So we live just over the hill. I'm on my way home. I'm like, what is wrong with this mower? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It wasn't operating by design. 
Everybody wants their life to be filled and to work like it's supposed to work. Well, Moses did that which God had given him, but the design, he followed the design. He builds it the way God designs, then God fills it. And for the most part, is running around miserable. And what they do is they try to fill it with these ancillary things, with these outside things. And, and they're like, oh, this right here would make me happy. This right here would do something for me. And it, and, and, and it, it may for a while, and it may be temporary, and then, and, and then it wears off, and then they have to redo something. They have to figure out why that didn't work and what else will help me. But here what we see is that everything that God did revolved around, we say, the tabernacle, but it wasn't the tabernacle. Nor was it all the laws. All of that pointed to this, His presence. I will be your God, and you will be my people. And this is why, by the way, so much of church doesn't work. Because so much of it, we think, revolves around all this stuff that we do. It doesn't. The stuff is just supposed to point us to the presence of God, the relationship of God. And so there's this cloud that 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 fills the temple and that covers the temple and and it and it uh, hovered over this ark the place of the presence of God and 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 it was this 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 sign to the people and all they even they even lived around it they put their tents up around this tabernacle their whole society revolved around the presence of God as designed and that's how your life is designed to work and so we're going to see how this looked, this idea of it being cloudy over the tabernacle all the time. For the children of Israel, it was always partly cloudy. For them, as they lived in the presence of God, as their lives revolved around the presence of God, there was always a cloud that showed God's presence was with them. And what it did was, it gave them their identity. I want you to note what the presence of God does for us. When your life revolves around this presence, because as you were reading this last week, you thought to yourself, for the love of mercy, I'm tired of reading about loops and hangings and and curtains. Why should I care? Because all of these things that God is asking you to do in faith He is leading you to His presence. He is leading you to a relationship with Him. He is leading you to the purpose of your life. He is leading you to where you are going to find your identity. Who are you? If I were to say, who are you, man? There are four quintessential worldview questions in life. Everybody has the answer. Who am I? Why am I here? How did I get here? And where am I going? If you're going to find, if you're going to live a life that makes any sense at all, who am I? You might say, well, I'm I'm a mother. Well, you might not always be a mother. Your identity going to be gone? If you don't find your identity in Christ, then if your kids leave, then your identity falls apart. See how that works? If you find your identity in your job, guess what? There's going to be a day when you can't find your identity in your job anymore. They're not going to want you around. Two things they'll pay you for in this life. What you can do and what you know. And one day you won't be able to do what you can do today. And one day you won't know the stuff that you know. And they'll know other stuff. And the stuff you know now won't matter. And I hope you don't find your identity there. Listen to what the Bible says here in uh, Exodus chapter number 40 and verse number 34. And the cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. This is what covered, and this is what filled. This is what identified. The tabernacle wasn't just the tabernacle for tabernacle's sake. It was what covered, and it was what filled. What fills you? What identifies your life and what fills you? 
What makes your life your life? What in your life do you have to have and why? What in your life could I, could I do like that Jenga game and take one piece out and the whole thing fall apart? What identifies you? Second Chronicles chapter four, uh, four, uh, 7, verse number 14. You've, you're familiar with this verse. If my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn for their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Heal their land. But most of us forget the first part of this verse. If my people. If my people who are called by my name. Who are you? Whose are you? Whose people are you? Because what happens is most people in life walk around like they belong to their self. I'm making my decision. Nobody tells me what to do. Uh, good luck with that. Right? I'll just figure it out. You, you will not figure it out. You ever noticed in your life that, especially if you're older like myself, that you're in the constant state of figuring it out? You're in a constant state of, I finally have it figured out. People are like, oh, wait, I, I wish I'd known when I was younger what I know now. Yeah, well, if you keep on living, you'll wish you knew today what you knew then. It's called premature nostalgia. Listen, there's no way you're ever going to get it figured out on your own. What should identify you if my people... Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 4 says, When Christ, who is my life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. You need to figure out what it is that identifies your life. And this is how God has designed life to work. God has created you, and He has designed you for Him. To be an image bearer for Him. To know Him first. To be identified by Him first. First, it doesn't mean that you can't do and enjoy the things that he's given you to do and enjoy that he's created for you. But it cannot be your identity. It cannot be what identifies you because all of it moves and shakes and, 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 it, and, it, and it changes and ebbs and flows. Ask yourself today what identifies you, what we learn in Exodus, what is right here in the middle. There should always be that cloud in life that identifies you. That relationship with Christ that identifies you. When somebody knows you, they ought to know that you are identified by Christ. This is the lesson of the tabernacle. This is the lesson of Exodus. The lesson of Leviticus. All these laws and all of these clean and unclean, what are they there for? They're, they tell the people, this is how I can approach the cloud. This is how I, can, how I can have relationship with the presence that identifies us as a people. Number two, it's what made them distinct. It's what made the people distinct. It's, I love how, I love how this, this, this verse reads in verse number 34. And the cloud, the cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Listen to what Romans chapter 9 and verse number 4 says. The one that when speaking about the Israelites, the Bible says in Romans 9, 4, To whom pertain the adoption and the glory. What is it? That brings you glory. What is it that you're known for? Right? When I, when I lived in Mississippi, we used to have dinner on the grounds all the time. I mean, it's just what we did. I mean, I, there's no, I don't know how in the world we just didn't all just have to saw each other's legs off all the time. And, 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 and everybody at these dinner on the grounds were known for their thing. And even sometimes ladies would get upset if you made their thing. And so, like, some people were known for their homemade rolls, and some people were known for their fried chicken. It was their glory, right? 
Miss So-and-so is going to be, be here. She's going to bring her rolls. She's going to bring her German chocolate cake. And she's going to bring whatever. It was their glory. Guys, a lot of time, uh, remember uh, their glory and they do certain things. They're good at, at hunting and fishing. You'll kill a deer and then you'll put his dead head on your wall so that you can remember your glory. If it wasn't so common, you would think it was weird. It was like you have lots of dead animals in here. Couldn't help but notice. Right? Why? Because it's like, man, I was out there, I was stalking, and I was just, dude, I'm like, that's, <laughs> yes, he's looking at me. Right? It's just, it's right, it's your glory. What would you think today if when I came into New York Baptist Church, instead of my weak attempt at looking like a preacher, instead I did this. I asked Rachel to bring this, and I hadn't even seen it in years. <laughs> You'd say, you're being weird. <laughs> it even feels weird. I hadn't seen it in years. I brought my class ring. You know what's weird? I, somebody called me and said, uh, Said, said uh, are, are you Tony Pierce? Or did you go to Baptist Christian Camp? I'm like, yeah. Uh, I had lost this in Orr City at the pole barn. And they dug it up and, and just knew who I was. That was weird. Uh, but anyway, so if I wore this every, every day, would you think that that was weird? Thank you. <laughs> When's the last time you went to a high school football game? Boy, you want to embrace some weirdness. Every person up there was a star football player. Every guy you sit next to. Right? When I was in school, we went to, I'm like, all of y'all did not go to state. You just didn't do it. Right? Because it's your glory. And you're just like, you just want to put a sign up that says, listen, you're just a was. Right? When I was young, I could do blah, blah, blah. I could, I could do all this. Yeah, but, but you can't now. Was that your glory? Reliving your glory days? What if I put my letterman jacket on and hung out in the school parking lot all the time? You wouldn't just think that was weird. You would think it was creepy. <laughs> like this dude, this dude is great. You need to find something else to do. You need to find somewhere else to be. There's going to be a day at your work where they're going to to look at you and they're going to be like, oh, here comes old what's his name. Right? They're probably there now. Probably some of you right now. Like he still thinks it's 1970. Here he comes with his notebook. I remember Brother Scott one time told me, he said, said uh, it might have been, I don't know if it's Brother Scott or whoever it was, uh, the first person to bring me a Blackberry. So you need to keep all your appointment stuff on a Blackberry. And man, I, I spent days putting all my information, all my stuff on one of them Blackberries. And I used it for like eight, eight months or close to a year, and all of a sudden I couldn't turn it on. So I called the tech people and all that stuff, and they're like, well, just it, the battery's just dead, and so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to... Uh, to uh, get, get a new battery, which was as much as the BlackBerry, by the way, and then take where, where you backed it up on your computer and just reload it. And I'm like, backed it up? <laughs> you never said backed it up. Nobody said backed it up. <laughs> I didn't have to back my notebook up <laughs> when I just wrote stuff down in note. And so somebody asked me one time, they said, where, where's that, where's that uh, PDA that you used to use? I'm like, it's oh, across the road and in bushes. I, th- I throw that stupid thing away. Like you, it irritated me, so I did not. I could not tell you. But all this glory, all this who we used to be, what we was. Listen, what is the distinction in your life? What is it that makes you distinct? What is it that makes you special? I live for my kids. Well, keep on. One day they won't live for you. 
Because if you're doing a halfway decent job, they'll go do it for themselves one day. And they'll have their own family. And they may or may not even have time to come by and say hello. I half expect my kids come by and knock my walker out from under me. <laughs> Told my wife, we need to go ahead and start picking out our home. I'm not trusting my kids with that. <laughs> not for a second. Not after what we've been through. What is it that makes you distinct? The car you drive, the uh, it's just such a weird deal. We used to have a couple people that gone to be with, gone on to their eternal reward now, but there used to be some people who used to cruise the red light North City and hang out at the car wash. You can see them, wong, 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 hang out at the armadillo. And I always just want to say, you're grown. Find some grown people stuff to do. I mean, it was okay when you were in high school. You're 30 years old. That's what had, that was their glory days. And so they were still trying to be defined by their glory days. What is it that, and this is important, because listen, you don't know how many people are sitting around miserable in their life because they used to feel distinct. They used to feel like they had glory in their life. They used to feel like their lives matter. And now they don't. The glory. When the children of Israel would go around, and they, when they went, first went into the land of Canaan, the, the, uh, the people in, in Jericho said, we've heard of you. And not because you're awesome, but we heard about that God you serve. We've heard what He did in Egypt. We heard how He led you in the way. And every person's heart here in this city, faints because of you. There will be a day when people are no longer in awe at whatever it is that you do. How cool you are and how awesome you are. Listen, nothing is sadder than somebody, an older person who still thinks they're cool. Nobody wants to see you in your convertible with your arm fat flapping in the wind. And we, we can all appreciate what you're trying to do, man. But that ship sailed. Still head bobbing, bobbing people and all that. You are either a was or you about to be a was. And if that's how you find your distinction, then it will leave an empty taste in your mouth. It'll be dust. Keelan and them asked me the other day after a birthday party, hey, hang around and play basketball. Okay. They were all super impressed at my three-inch vertical. Look, I had epilepsy or something up there. No, nobody was impressed. The distinction is not going to be in who you are and who your ability. You better find it in somebody else. Listen to what the Bible says in Exodus chapter number 6 and verse number 7. And I will take you for me a people. And I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God that bringeth you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. You'll know it. You'll know that you're distinct, that you're special because of me. Deuteronomy 14.2 For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people to Himself above all the nations of the earth. The Lord's chosen you to be special, to be unique, to be different. It's what gives you your foundation. This presence of God in your life, as we read through Scripture together, what we are looking at, what we are looking for, is who God is and, who's, and His presence in our life. It is all that matters. That other stuff is going to make you empty and it make you look dumb.
Exodus chapter 40 and verse number 35, And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud, listen here, it abode thereon. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. This, this cloud abode. It stayed there. This was the eternal presence of God. It doesn't change. It gives us this foundation in life. I love Psalms Verse, uh, chapter number 1 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So many of us, we're trying to do what the world wants us to do and act like the world wants us to act and, 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 and try to conform to what they think is awesome and great. But blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scorn, scornful. For his delight, what he delights in, is in the law of the Lord, the design of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. He thinks about it all the time. And let me tell you how the Bible describes that person that learns to abide there, who learns to live with the eternal abiding of God and his design in this world. And the Bible says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that gives forth its fruit in its season, and his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does will prosper. That foundation, that stability, that consistency in your life because what happens is you're always looking for that next good thing, that next big thing that finally is going to be the thing. And there's not another thing except for the Lord that is going to give you that stability in your life. It's why people are so depressed and so anxious and so uh, discouraged with life. Because it changes and ebbs and flows. Brother Tony, how do I find balance in my life? You don't find balance. Everything changes all the time. You can't find balance. As soon as you find balance, well, everything's finally balanced. So you're going to chunk something on the other side. No, you can't find balance. You can find stability. You find a foundation. You can find something that doesn't move and change and shift. I love what our faithful martyr Agabus said. Don't you know the whole world's against you? And he said, well, then I'm against the whole world. If they change their mind, too bad for them. I'm not changing mine. G.K. Chesterton said, it's not God that has moved, it's us that's gone for a walk. This idea that God is our foundation, He is our stability. This is what we learn in Exodus chapter number 40. He's also our direction. How do I know what to do? How to do it? Where to go? Exodus chapter number 40, verse number 36. And when the cloud, listen here, when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went forward in, in all their journeys. But when the cloud was not taken up, then, the, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. Hey, where are you going? Where are you going in your life? Where are you going, man? How are you going to get there? The real truth of the matter is, as an adult, you have no idea, do you? You don't know. You've been throwing stuff up against the wall, seeing what will stick. Let me try this. Let me try that. Let me do this. Let me do that. There's another way. The presence of God, what happened was it abode over this tabernacle. And it was time for the, when it was time for the children of Israel to move, and the cloud moved. And the children of Israel, they'd see this cloud, and it would start moving, and, it, and it, the dad would say, hey, time to pack up. I'm playing with my friends. Don't matter. The cloud's moving. And if the cloud's not moving, man, I'm tired of being here. Don't matter. Find something to do because the cloud's not moving. Well, something about following God's will and following God's presence. Jeremiah chapter number 10, verse number 23. Listen to this verse. This ought to be on your coffee cup. If you keep listening to me, you're going to have a lot of coffee cups. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in him. It is not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. Lord, I know that the way of man is not in him. 
Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. God is not interested in being your co-pilot. God's not interested in helping you with your life. God's not interested in helping you find what you want. God is interested in defining your life. Directing your life. He will direct your path. Lord, I want to do this. Help me do this. Nope, I'm not doing that. Here's what I will do. I'm going this way. You want to go? Then get on. This is where we're going. This is where the cloud's going. You want to go with the Lord? This is where, this is where the Lord's going. Seems unreasonable. Seems like a difficult way. Remember when the children of Israel left Egypt? I mean, yes, left Egypt to go to Canaan. And the Bible says they didn't go the easy way. They didn't go the short way. Why do you think God didn't lead them the easy way, the short way? The, real, the short answer is none of your business. Because God knows what He's doing. That's really the answer. Are we going to follow the Lord? Are we going to trust the Lord or we're not? Trust in the Lord... With all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. <coughs> Excuse me, and He'll direct your paths. So, we find our direction in Him, and lastly, our confirmation in Him. So, Brother Tony, I don't know, man. Sounds preachery to me. Sounds fluffy to me. Sounds like church talk to me. I understand. Some of you have lived, lived enough life. Listen to what this says in verse number 38. Verse number 38, the Bible says, For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and the fire by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So here's what God does God makes his presence known he gives us his word he gives us the principles of life and his presence to enjoy and to embrace he also gives you option B you tell me how did diesel work in your riding more I guess you can just keep on putting it in there. Just saying something must be wrong with the designer of these mowers. That is one one thing. That could be the problem. Or the problem could be you keep putting the wrong gas in your riding mower. Listen to what happens. They God showed them intentionally his presence so that they might know. I love what 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12 says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For, or because, I know whom I believed, and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know. He says, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed that, of the life that God has called me to live. Do you know why? Because I know whom I believed. I've lived the Christian life. God allows you to live in His presence enough to where you can see it work. God would allow you as you submit to Him to know Him and see Him working in your life. Or, as a good friend of mine one time said about fishing, you can keep doing that which ain't been working. All I know to do is keep doing that which ain't been working. And we've seen, I've seen people do it right to the grave. As the musicians come, Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 8 says this, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss. What would bring somebody to the place in their life where, I say, where they say, I count everything in this life loss. Count it loss. You know, know what it was? You know what Paul said? For the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If 
you ever experience him, if you ever trust him, if you'll ever get to the place to where you'll bow your knee and commit yourself to him, you can see it for yourself. Well, Tony, just don't sound right. <laughs> okay. Well, how is wandering in the wilderness following making your own cloud? How's that been working? I'll tell you how it works for me. It gets me twisted up and lost on the backside of some mountain somewhere. It don't work at all. Now, I can tell you this. Following the Lord sometimes gets me thinking, Lord, I'm not sure this is the right way. I'm in between the Red Sea and the enemy. And I got nowhere to go. But then as you trust the Lord, you see Him opening red seas. And you see Him doing things in your life. And you get to see that trusting the Lord is still the right way to go. Everything in Exodus, Leviticus, it all revolved around the presence of God in your life. It begins with Him revealing Himself him revealing who you are, a sinner in need of someone to save. Him saving you and you following Him. The presence of God. And let's pray. Lord, we thank You. We love You. Lord, we thank You so much for all that You've done. And Lord, all that You are. We pray, Lord God, that You would help us, Lord, to humble ourselves. Lord, to be willing to be honest about our lack of ability. Be willing to acknowledge that according to Psalms, Lord, uh, in agreement with your word, that we are walking in vain show. We can make ourselves look like so much that we are not. And this life can look like so much that it's not. But Lord God, that you've designed us for your presence. You've designed us, Lord God, to know you, to experience you. Would help us to yield to that, I pray. In your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And let's stand together. The altar is open today, whatever the need is. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, if you've never bowed the knee, if you've never come to the Lord in repentance and just said, Lord, I'm, I'm just, listen, I don't, I'm wrong about life, and I need you. But Scott would love to share Christ with you today. If you just need prayer today, this altar is open, whatever the need is. If you need to come, you come.
All right, we have some things we want to share with you about um, going on in the life of New Hope, and we want to update you about um, the baby bottle campaign and your generous donation to Hannah House Maternity Home through all of the change that you gave all last month for Hannah House, and you outdid yourselves Hello. compared to the previous month. Hello. You gave over $2,000. Hello. Yes, give the Lord a hand. $2,070. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's not working. Why Ryan, is it? Ryan, what? Ryan, honey, what are you doing? What? what are you doing? I'm trying to get connected. I can't, nobody's. Honey, you're not plugged in. Well, I mean, what? I'm trying. What? Okay. What are, you, not what are you trying to do? What, I'm trying what is to happening? get connected. To what? To, to what? To the ladies. The ladies. Yes. There's ladies. There are ladies yeah. everywhere. What are you talking about? The ladies. They're doing. They're doing a retreat. I'm we, trying that, to get connected. That is true. That is that is true. We're we're having a retreat. The phone is not going to help you. The phone is. Are you trying to go to the retreat? Is yes. that what's happening? Okay. Sorry, y'all. This is she's pretty new to the ladies thing, you know. So. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to go to the ladies' retreat, you are going to have to go out there after church. Out there? Yes, to the to the welcome table. Okay. Yes, and you can talk to Miss Pat or Miss Gina, wherever they're at. They're going to be out there in a little while, and you can get signed up to go to the ladies' retreat. That's that that's not going to help. That's Ms. not. Miss Pat. Help. Do you do you not read the bulletin? Do you not listen to Brother no. Scott? Well, you know, I you know have to goes. listen to Brother Scott. Okay, I tell you what, let's <laughs> let's me and you let's go out there now, and I'll we'll we'll get you taken care of. Okay. We'll get you plugged okay. in. Okay. Get back to what you were doing. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's right. <clears throat> so yes, if you want to get plugged in, you can't, probably can't do it with the landline. If you want to go on on the ladies' retreat. Uh, you need to get registered for the ladies' retreat because that thing has kind of taken off on a life of its own, and there's some ladies from other churches that uh, are now interested in going on the ladies' retreat. So if you want to register for the ladies' retreat and you want to, uh, I know that some of you are interested in getting a private room and and not doing double occupancy and so on like that. And so if you don't if you don't want to get bumped out of that from somebody, you need to go get registered and, uh, and get signed up for that. So the information about that is in the lobby at the welcome table. So see the ladies uh, about registering for the ladies retreat. All the information about that uh, is on the back of the bulletin and in the lobby. This week, Valentine's Banquet, Saturday. The adult Valentine Banquet, Saturday, 6 o'clock p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. It's $12 a person. Tickets are available in the lobby at the welcome table. Uh, purchase a ticket. Talk to the ladies there so you can make your menu choice. You can also sign up online on the website, hopeonthehill.net, and make your choice there, and you can pay online as well. So keep that in mind. That's this Saturday. Uh, <laughs> they have the mics on. Turn off the board, whatever. Um, next week, on Valentine's Day, we got two things going on on Valentine's Day. There is the a luncheon sponsored by, uh, by our widows ministry. The widows might is uh, having a luncheon for our widows. And so if you are a widow, if you know of a widow, you'd like to invite them. It, tickets are available in the lobby. They're seven fifty a person. And so uh, keep that in mind. You can get, read more information about that. Also on Tuesday, uh, we are partnering with Baptist Student Ministries at Kilgore College and helping to serve lunch to two or 300 college students on Tuesday. So if you would like to be a part of that, there's a sign-up form at the welcome table. I know many of you have done this in years past as we have done this uh, event. In this ministry opportunity, so sign up there, leave your name and number so you can be contacted or you can see Brother Tony or, or Dennis North to get more information about that. Next week 
uh, on the 16th is the ladies' luncheon. That's for uh, all ladies here uh, at the Fellowship Hall at 11 a.m. on Thursday. And we have two different uh, bass tournaments that you can sign up for. The New Hope Annual Tournament. This raises funds for our food ministry. Uh, that includes things like doing the Baptist Student Ministry and the um, Combat Warriors Luncheon that we do every year and, and these different food service ministries and the ministries within our congregation. And then the Christian Motorcycle Association Bass Tournament. Uh, the Civilies are here. They can answer questions about that. And there's a complete list of rules and an entry form for that in the lobby. So several things going on in the life of New Hope. We invite you to, to jump in and take part in that. Uh, visit our website, hopeonthehill.net, to find out more about what's going on. If there's anything that we can do to help you out, uh, please contact us. Give us a call. Contact us on Facebook, uh, email, whatever the case may be. Uh, we appreciate you so much being here today. If you filled out a guest card, please turn that in to the welcome table. Thank you so much for being here. You are dismissed. Yay. Yay.